Hi, welcome back. Today I'm going to paint this coastal cottage scene. Um, I sketched out a thumbnail. You can pause it here and read my notes if you like, but it's just to get all the information and the, um, the tones prepared. And then I sketched it out roughly onto my water paper, uh, watercolour paper in pencil just to show where I want, as a guide, where I want to paint. Here are my paints. I shall list them below. And here's a selection of brushes I picked out. Um, I might not use them all. First things first, um, some coffee, as always, when I paint in the morning especially. And now I'm going to use the large Harky brush and slightly more carefully than usual for this one, I'm going to wet the sky. I'm going to try and cut round the cottage because I want a nice strong cobalt blue sky so I want to try and keep the cottage clear of paint at this point if I can. It's quite a warm day here so I'm going to make sure I've got enough water if, and it doesn't dry out too quickly because the hotter the weather the quicker the water dries. Now this is my cobalt blue. I want a fairly thick mixture to start with across the top and then I'm hoping for a graduated wash that fades towards the bottom of the sky. I'm going to put it across quite carefully. Doesn't matter if it goes over the cottage a little bit, the roof, but I'm going to try and keep it away from the uh, front wall, which I want to keep um, the white of the paper. It's a bit awkward cutting around, especially as I'm working around the tripod here, but uh, just do your best. The fact that the paper's wet means that it should diffuse a bit and even if it's not completely smooth graduated wash we should get a, a fairly convincing looking sky. Now I've got a little bit more paint on my brush and I'm going to put in a slightly darker area for the sea because I want the sea to be nice and blue reflecting that lovely blue sky as it does in the reference photo. So I'm trying to keep things nice and simple here and I'm taking a clean damp brush. I'm just going to just um, take out a little bit of paint carefully along the horizon line just to create that nice differentiation between um, the sky and the sea, just a subtle dif differentiation. Now I'm going to leave the sky alone now. Alright, time to start painting the foreground. I'm mixing up some raw sienna um, on the tips of the Harky brush and I'm just going to, following the direction in the reference photograph of all the reeds and grasses and corns, I'm just going to randomly sort of stroke across the bottom of the picture and then pick up some um, some paler paint, maybe a little bit more water, and just some paler paint across the um, towards the distance of that the grassy area, the dunes. Um, this is yellow ochre, which is stronger, so be a little bit more careful, but still trying to get some differentiation of those lovely golden tones that work so well with the cobalt blue. Trying to keep it nice and sort of um, in sort of diagonal strokes, imitating the direction of those grasses in the photo. Now I'm going to do the same but picking up a little bit of burnt sienna and burnt umber. Not too much, um, using a small harky brush and it doesn't really matter what size, you could, you could use a flat brush for this or a round, anything really. But I'm just going to get in some darker patches across this corner in particular, um, just keeping those streaks and marks because in the photograph um, there's quite a lot of dark shadow in the foreground. 
but I'm just trying to carry that colour across the rest of the foreground but small, smaller amounts of it, slightly paler. I'm just going to keep working until I feel happy with that as a foreground. Now I've got a cheap old bristle brush here and I'm just going to see if it will give me any texture. If I can just use it slightly damp and just see if I can draw out some texture from the paint. It's not really making a lot of difference to be honest here but we'll see. Right now I'm going to take um, a cut up credit card and using the corner I'm just going to scrape out in that same sort of diagonal windswept direction um, details of the grasses just trying to get back to some white paper there if possible so that we get some highlights um, and sort of these nice grass strokes which I think now you can see that we've got um, in the close-up I think it's looking quite nice so far right the next stage now is it's dry across the roof so we we'll take the flat brush and I'm going to mix up a sort of mixture of the um, the raw sienna yellow ochre maybe sort of some of the slightly darker burnt colors and I'm just going to put a touch of cobalt blue in there just to sort of grey it down very slightly just going to keep going until I feel it's the right sort of colour, fairly light, watery mix, um, just to get a first coating on the roof. I'm going to be quite careful cutting around that, that shape, trying to keep the shape that I've sketched in. I'm going to cut round the chimney as well, leaving that unpainted for now if I can I think that's just about okay. I'm going to get some slightly darker paint on my brush and I'm just going to use the tips of the brush to just carefully um, put in the edge of the roof. It's the edge of the thatch. It's quite a thick dark um, area. But I'm just going to put it in carefully and get it defined. I'm going to define the shadow side of the chimney as well while I've got that slightly darker paint. Going to mix um, a bit of the Payne's Grey now into it, quite watery Payne's Grey, um, and just use the Payne's Grey on the tips of the flat brush again just to darken up. Now I've got that area defined, um, I'm going to put some even darker paint into it, and that should run into the still wet edging just to create that nice shadow under the under the eaves of the roof that I want. going to leave the cottage for a little while and using the rigger brush I'm going to mix up various mixtures of um, these lovely earthy colours, the raw sienna, the yellow ochre, um, the burnt sienna and burnt umber and I'm going to put some stronger uh, rigger grasses across the bottom. I'm going to start off and go over the tape so it looks like when the tape's removed the grasses you just see part of a grass stem coming up into the picture and that looks quite realistic so that's another reason why I like to tape my drawings sometimes is so that I can have a nice sort of edge if you know what I mean. 
I've changed to a thicker rigger brush because that thinner one wasn't holding enough paint um, for the nice strong strokes. I'm not going to film all of this but I'm going to work backwards and forwards with different shades, different colours until the grass looks how I want it to look across the foreground. Okay, that's good. Now back to the cottage, a smaller flat brush, a little bit more of the Payne's Grey. I'm just going to very carefully just touch in very lightly the edges of those windows that I drew out fairly carefully to start with. I just want to get the just a hint of where the frames are because it'll make it a bit easier to paint once I've got them started. Just a slightly darker sort of brown mix from the palette just to put in the shadow side of that chimney and now I'm going to mix up a darker mix of those earth colours, uh, just whatever I can find on the palette until it looks the sort of colour that I want and I'm just going to darken up the roof a bit more, trying to keep to the outlines. For the moment I'm going to leave that light part of the chimney, I'll put that in a bit later. No, I'll put it in now. Let's get that in, and then once that's a bit drier we can make some adjustments. Try not to make the roof too even, I want it to have a sort of slightly patchy look to sort of um, suggest the thatch but still keeping it loose and simple. Right, I've zoomed in now, and now for the potentially tricky part with the rigger, I'm just going to use the Payne's Grey, a fairly thick, sort of inky consistency, to put in the verticals and a few random horizontals of on the windows just to indicate the window panes. I'm not painting in every single frame. I'm trying to leave a few gaps here because I think that looks a little bit more realistic. I'm not trying for too much detail here, but of course if you've got enough time and if you if you want to you can really go to town with the detail on these windows. Now using my small flat brush from the left towards the right I'm just pulling across a bit of paint to make the windows look shadowed. Do the same with the shadow side of the chimney. We're nearly finished now really, it's just a few sort of finishing touches. Just um, going to get some a darker shadow carefully um, under the under the eaves of the roof, under the thatch. Just a darker line. I think it just makes the building pop a little bit more. And finally, I think it's a really important detail that I nearly forgot is that shadow across the roof from the chimney which I think is just the sort of touch that just finishes off this simple painting quite beautifully. So now this is just about finished. I shall take the tape off in a minute when it's dry um, and you can see that it it looks rather nice and I do think that it the front of the building you know I'm keeping the light here and I think that we've simplified this from the photograph and produced a nice loose painting.
Well, I hope you'll give this a try and I look forward to seeing your results. Take care then. See you soon. Bye.